right, welcome back everyone. I'm Nick. We're in what I'll call the final stretch of the boot camp. Uh, the next bunch of videos are gonna be fairly easy. We're just gonna look at some of the main common components that we put into our Swift UI apps. So if you've been following along so far, I definitely wanna thank you for watching and I hope you guys are learning something. We are really covering all of the basics in this course. And in this video, we are gonna look at text fields. So this is the perfect component to put on the screen if you have a situation where your users need to actually type something in. So we'll put a text field on the screen and then users can type it in and we can use the value of whatever they typed in somewhere else in our app. It's fairly easy to implement, so this will be a quick video, but I'm also gonna show you guys a couple quick ways to format it to make it look pretty good. Welcome back everyone. As always, we're gonna start this video by creating a new file in our Xcode project. So let's right click the navigator, create a new file. You guessed it, it's gonna be a Swift UI view. And we're talking about text fields, so let's call it text field bootcamp. Go ahead and click create. Once you're inside, click resume on that canvas, and let's get coding. So Swift UI makes it extremely easy to add a text field to your screen so that users can actually type in some information. And let's start very simply by adding a text field. Open the parentheses, and there are a whole bunch of different completions here. We're gonna keep it simple and just use the string protocol and binding text completion. So for the title, this is the placeholder when there is no text in the text field. And we're just gonna leave this string as type something here, dot, dot, dot. And for the text, we can see that we need a binding string. So all we need to do is create a state variable at state var. We'll call this text field text. It'll be of type string, and we'll set it equal to a blank string for now. We're gonna bind it to the text field with the money sign, text field text. Let's go ahead and resume the canvas and see what this looks like. So it's a little hard to see right now because the default background is white, uh, but we actually do have a text field on the screen here. And if I click play on the live preview, we can actually click onto this text field and we can start typing. So if this was on a real app and not on this preview here, so if we were on a simulator and I clicked on this, the keyboard will actually pop up automatically. But because we're in a simulator, there is no keyboard, but I can just type using my keyboards. So we can type whatever we want here. This is some text. So it's a very simple way for your users to be able to add some text to something. So let's take this a little further and let's add some formatting and additional logic to make this text field a little more realistic. So first let's format the text field. And there is a text field style. And we can start typing in text field style. And we'll see the different options here. Uh, default and plain kind of look just like it does now. And the rounded border just gives it a thin little border around the edge. So let's just check out the rounded border for a second. Open, close the parentheses. <clears throat> and you can see the little border that pops up around it. I actually don't use these text field styles and just customize the text field directly. So let's just comment that out. I just wanted to let you know that it was there. And let's add a background. We'll do color.gray. And the gray is really dark, so let's add it. So let's also add an opacity of maybe 0.3 to this gray. That looks better. Let's, let's add some padding around the edges. So before the background, let's add padding. Let's also add corners on the background. So we'll do dot corner radius of 10 maybe. And then when we start typing into this text field, I wanna just change the color of this actual text. So I'll do that by changing the foreground color and let's do dot red just to make it stand out. We can also change the font, so we'll do dot font, maybe headline. And now it says type something here, and we can type in hello, and it's going to be red with the headline font. I don't think there's an easy way to change the placeholder color, this dark gray here. So I'm just gonna leave this as dark gray for now, and let's finish up our screen. Let's embed this text field into a VStack. Let's add a button. Let's give it an action and a label completion. For the action, we'll leave it blank for a second. For the text, we'll maybe change this to save, called uppercase. 
And let's format this a little bit. So I'm just going to copy this formatting here, the padding, the background color, the foreground color, the font. I'm gonna paste it down here. And let's just change up some of the colors. So maybe instead of color gray, this will be color dot blue. Let's get rid of the opacity. The foreground color, let's make white. And I want this background to extend as large as possible, just like the text field. So by default, the text field has a max width of infinity, but we have to manually add it to the button. So right here, before the background, let's add dot frame max width dot infinity. So now we have a save button and our text field. And now let's embed this V stack into a navigation view. So I'm going to type in navigation view, open the brackets, and then I'm going to cut the whole V stack and paste it inside the navigation view. Now that we're in this nav view, we can set a title. So at the bottom of the V stack, I'll add dot navigation title. Let's do text field bootcamp. That looks good. And let's push the content in the V stack up. So underneath the button, I'll add a spacer. And let's add some padding around it. So around the whole V stack, let's add padding. And that looks a little better. So now let's start adding some logic into our actual text field. So when we type something, hello, and we click on the save button, let's actually get it to save. So let's create a function first for saving the text. So outside the body at the bottom here, I'm gonna add a func, save text open and close the parentheses, open the brackets. And then what are we gonna do with the text when we actually save it? So let's append it to a local array. So let's create a data array at the top. We'll do at state var data array. It'll be of type array of string. And we're gonna set it equal to a blank array for now. So nothing in it at the start, but when we click save, we're gonna append items to this data array. So in the save text, we'll call data array dot append. What is the new element? Well, it's going to be our text field text. Because remember, this text field text is binding to the text field. So when we update the text field, this variable gets updated in real time. So whatever is typed into the text field is always instantly going to be the exact same as this text here is this variable. So we're just going to use this variable when we append. So we're going to call text field text and then that should save. Let's create a quick for each underneath this button here to, to display all of our data in the data array. So we'll do for each, open the parentheses. And here we're gonna use the completion with the ID method again. So we're gonna click enter on that. The data of course is our data array. The ID will be backslash dot self, just basically creating an ID for each item in the data array. And click enter on the content I don't like this completion, so we're going to delete it. And this is going to be each item in the data array, so we'll just call this data. And then let's just add a text with the data inside. So nothing special here. Again, if you are getting confused with how to use the for each, how to use the navigation view, how to extract functions, I have covered all of these uh, in other videos in this course. So if you're getting confused, just look back through the other videos in this course and you should be able to figure out what we're doing here. And let's test this out now. So I'm going to zoom out here so we can get see this all on one screen. And the last thing we need to do is within our button, we need to call this function save text. So we'll call save text from in here. Let's press resume on the canvas and let's test this out. So I'm gonna type in hello. And when we click save, it should be appending the current text to the data array and that data array should be getting updated and showing below the button here. So click on save and we can see that hello popped up down here. So it did save our text. If I change this to hello there, click save, we can see that it's updating. Now there's a couple things here I wanna note. And first is that after we do click save, the text is still in our text field. And most often when someone saves or clicks update in your app, this text should then go away because you already saved the data because you don't want to run into a situation where they're clicking save and then they click it multiple times and you end up with data kind of like this. So what we'll do very simply is 
in their save text function after we append the text field text let's just set the text field text back to a blank string so we'll do text field text equals blank string and that's again how it started up at the top here so let's test this out we'll do hello click save and now hello saved and the text field went back to blank try again click save and the text field went back to blank and one other super useful trick that I want to show you guys before we wrap up this video is how to validate text because sometimes you want to make sure that they have maybe uh, no curse words in their text or they have at least three or five characters in their text because if it's like a username you don't want them to just have one letter you want to make sure that they have at least six characters or a special character or something like that so what we're going to do is add another function before save text we're going to add func text is appropriate open and close the parentheses and this will return a boolean then we're going to open the brackets and in here we're just going to check if the text is appropriate or not and if it is good we'll return true if it is bad we'll return false so in this function in your real app you would probably have more logic but for right now let's just check that the text is at least three characters long so we'll say if text field text because this is the current value of the text dot count is greater than or equal to three open the brackets then we'll return true so it is appropriate if it's at least greater than or equal to three otherwise it's going to be false so we're just going to return false so it's going to try to run this and if it returns true it's going to exit out of this function but if this fails it's going to then return false so this text is appropriate function we can now use in our body so before we call save text we'll call if text is appropriate and remember this is returning a bool so if this is true open the brackets then we'll save text and let's check that out real quick I'll zoom out here so you can see the whole all the code so I'm going to type in two letters hi and click save and we can see that it's not working if I type in three letters click save we can see that now it's saved so this is working let's take this a couple steps further and let's actually update this button here so that it's only blue if the text is appropriate so I'm gonna go into this background code here let's first take this corner radius and let's just put it after the background so I'm gonna cut it I'm gonna paste it here and then this instead of just calling color dot blue let's write text is appropriate question mark color dot blue otherwise color dot gray and this again is a ternary operator and I did a whole video on these before so you should understand how this works uh, and basically it's checking if text is appropriate if this is true then color blue if it's not otherwise color gray and we can see that now on our preview and it's super convenient because when the user is typing and they type in two letters it's only gray if they type in one more it's now blue so it is a nice indicator on when they can actually click the save button and we can take this actually one step even further and we can actually disable this button when it's not appropriate so on the button itself down here I'll call dot disabled and this just takes a boolean so when do we want it to be disabled well we want it to be disabled when the text is not appropriate so not text is appropriate I'm using that exclamation point to do the opposite of text is appropriate so when text is appropriate is true this is actually going to be false when text appropriate is false this is actually going to be true so let's test it again and when I'm in my app here and I try to click on the button it doesn't even let me click on it because it's disabled and when I type three letters it can now let me click on it and we can save our text so that's it for this video you guys now know how to use the text field before we go I will just mention that in the text field when we go to set that up and open the parentheses there are a bunch of completion options and we use this very basic one uh, but if you wanted an action to run when someone actually clicks onto the text field you can use this completion here with the on editing changed 
Or if you wanted an action to run when someone clicks the return button on the keyboard, the bottom right button on the keyboard, that will be this on commit function here. And then there's also a way to format text if you wanted the text to look a certain way in the text field. For example, if you wanted to have currencies and you wanted the dollar sign to be before the numbers or something like that, you can use a formatter. These are a little more complex and a little less common, so I'm not going to dive into them in this beginner course, but you guys should know that they are there. So again, text fields are super simple and easy to connect in SwiftUI. It provides a way for your users to actually type in some text and submit it onto your app. This is great for adding usernames and adding comments and pretty much anywhere where someone is going to actually type something. And yes, if you're wondering, the text field is limited to one line. So we cannot have multiple lines in our text field. This is just a one liner here. If we want to have multiple lines, we can use a text editor. And surprise, we're going to do that in the next video. So as always, thank you guys for watching. Hit the like button if you're learning something. Hit the subscribe button if you're enjoying this content. And of course, I'm Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking. And I will see you guys in the next video.